Hi everyone, David Maley here and I'm back today for part four of this exciting series on logistic regression and in particular multiple logistic regression. So if you haven't watched them already, there's three other videos. There's part one, part two, and part three where we go through the various aspects of the exploratory data analysis, building the test and training data set. And then on top of that, the last video went into two different methods of determining the values of our uh, predictors or the predictor importance. This uh, graph over here on the right was the Baruta method where we determine which uh, values or which fields, columns of our data are the most important. Obviously from this you can see the green ones are the most important. Yellow and is in between and blue and red is the bottom. So remember what we did was we wanted to do this on purpose because we're going to do our logistic model today. And I don't want to use every field because some of these fields will actually lower our uh, model's accuracy. So we want to, you know, remove them from it. So what you'll see here is I have two different groupings. And I'm going to open this up here so you can see before and after. So if I were to use all of the variables from the data set that we have, the Kratom uh, data set, which is available on uh, Kaggle and uh, that I'm using here, but you can use any data set you want. It doesn't matter. And when you look at this, the top one has all the fields in it, and the second one has the fields removed that are no that are not determined to be as important. Okay, so the non-green ones in the Baruta method over here. If I bring that back out, there we go. See that? So I removed date Y, rank one, week num, and stuff like that. Okay, and I left all these guys in there, the violent crime, total sales, units, transactions, and uh, I believe we left average temp in there. Let's just move this this way, and we still have average temp in there, yes. So yellow and above, I kept. Anything red and blue, I removed. So the difference between the two is if I run the logistic model for these two, um, the first one, which has all of the variables in it, has a lower AIC and BIC score. And you're like, well, what is that? Well, that's how we measure the accuracy, or one way to measure the accuracy of these logistic models. So uh, AIC stands for Akeke's Information Criteria, and BIC is the Bayesian uh, Information Criteria. They both utilize uh, scoring penalties for including the additional variables to the model. So when I include these guys down here that aren't as meaningful, they'll penalize it more, which gives you a higher score. So you want to have your score as low as you can. So the first one here where I kept all of the uh, fields in it, I'll show you. I'll go back here and show you. There it is. I have a 20 for AIC and a 37.612 for the BIC, or the Bayesian Information uh, Controls. And um, so we go down here, if I were to run this one, now that's pretty good anyway, 20 and 37, you want to be below 100 is basically the goal for these, right? But let's run the second one. If I ran the second one, you see down here it drops from, originally it was, oops, let's go here, originally it was 20 and 37, right? Okay, now it's 14 and 26, so we're even better on both. Now the BIC, because it penalizes higher or has a larger penalty, will have a higher score. So keep that in mind. If one is like 120 and the other one's like 84, you know you're still pretty good. You're between. You're at 100 or below. That's what you want to be. And uh, in this case, we got a very good score for both the AIC or A Kiki's information criteria and the BIC or Bayesian information criteria. So this again. When I go back here and show you, I am using the GLM formula, okay, GLM function right here. And uh, this is in the stuff I already included above, so you don't have to add any more libraries. Go back and watch videos one, two, or three if you want to see the libraries of it. I've installed in this. And uh, the GLM function, basically the way it works is the uh, field that I'm looking at that I'm interested in predicting is this one, is the first one, right? Day type. I'm looking. I want to know. You know, are we going to have uh, great sales or bad sales? So type A or type B day. 
okay we know that a was lower crime b was higher crime a was lower sales b was higher sales we already determined that in video two and video one um, so that's what we're looking for and then here are the uh, variables we're using and then here we have data equals training data we're using the training data data set we created in video two okay and then the rest is just family equals binomial link equals logit it's the same okay so that's basically what you're using here the only difference between these two is that I have week num date y and uh, some other things rank one and some stuff that's in the red and blues here in the Bruda method that I don't really need or want and will actually hurt my accuracy. So that's why we run the random forest to score and then we use the Bruda method to uh, visualize the importance of these. So anything that's in a green on the Bruda method is great. Go ahead and use that. Um, anything you know, as long as it's not something that's a huge variability or has some, a couple of dots down below that are outliers. You might have to remove the outliers or deal with the outliers. But in this case, we don't have to worry about that. We just stick with the green ones and stay away from the uh, reds and blues. And the yellow is average temperature. We know that uh, temperature does have an effect on sales, so we want to bring that in. We already saw that and proved that in the exploratory data analysis in video one of this series. So once we've done that, we've built our model, right? Let me bring this back out so you can see the whole code. I want you to see everything here. Okay, so I'm going to just use one of these, right? I'm going to use the bottom one, not the top one, remember, because the top one has all the fields in it. Then once I've done that, I'm going to run and get the predictor scores based on that. Okay, so that's this right here, where we run predict the predict function on our logistic model, which we just created. That's this, right? And now we're using the test data, okay, the test data set. So we're going to take what we just run on our training data. This is how it works. You run this on your training data first. We build our model off the training data. We train the data. Then next, what we're going to do is we're going to take it and predict it on the test data set. So remember how we did that in video uh, two when we created the training and test data sets. 75% of our data set was left for the training set and then the uh, other 25% was used for the test data set. We didn't just split it up by 75 and 25%. We also had to go and make sure we had A and B days in both correctly. So that, go back to video two to see that if you haven't seen that. Then once we've done this, we've got our predictions on it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this where we put it into a field on the test data, right? So we've got now a test data uh, the, in the test data data frame or that data set we have uh, now a new field called predicted. See how that works? So you have the dollar sign, this puts that field in there and that puts the predicted data correctly in there. And next, now we don't, in this case we've got very high accuracy so I don't have to worry about this, but later on for video five if you wanted to do an optimal cutoff to possibly boost or increase your accuracy, you could do that. And that's what this is right here, this code right here. So all you would have to do is load in this library. It's called information value. Make sure that both the I and the V are capitalized in this case, because otherwise I won't find the, uh, the library. And if you don't have it, obviously use the install packages right here for you if you wanted to do it like this. And um, right there and uh, so once you have that you use this code right here where you just use optimal cutoff that is the function of test data day type which is what we're using right that's the actual column that we're interested in and predicted we're using the predicted against that so when you use that and get the optimal cutoff for it once you run this you would just run this and you get your optimal cutoff. In this case, if we're using this, when I use the first one, it's negative, uh, let's show you here, uh, 114 or something like that. There's one, negative 140, I'm sorry, negative 140. And then when I use the other way, with the bad columns that we don't need anymore that are irrelevant or actually impacted in a negative way, once we remove those, then we have a more accurate uh, value here for it of nine, negative 97. But in this case, we don't need to use that. We don't need that. So that's just here if you did. We're just going to use 50% later on in the next video and you'll see that. Okay, that's where that comes from. 
Next we want to do is we want to take a summary of our logistic model, place that into model summary, just like this, right? So we're just putting that into a variable, model summary or vector, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so we run that, right? We do this. Don't worry about the warnings and stuff. Then we want, if we want to look at our coefficients, we can do this. There's our coefficients, there's our p-values. Now, don't always go by the p-values, especially for a logistic uh, regression model like we're building here. So your p-values are here, they're a little high. All, you generally want to have a p-model of 0.15, but it doesn't apply here, and I'm going to show you why in a second. Here. So in this case, we have AIC and BIC, right? So we have our Akeke's information criteria, and the Bayesian information criteria, which we just showed you earlier. And uh, basically all it is, the AIC function and the BIC function, they're right here, both these. And what you want to do is you want them to be as low as possible, under 100, as I explained earlier. And uh, they, as I said earlier, they uh, give you a penalty for additional uh, attributes or uh, variables that you're adding to these. So when you add in the reds and blues from the Bruda method, they actually increase these values, so you want to be under 100 for them. Um, now, if one's over 100, the BIC tends to be higher than the AIC. If that one's higher, because of the higher penalty, if that one's higher than 100, but the other one's lower than 100, you're good. You want to have the average between the two at 100 or less, okay? So in this case, I can run them again here if we want. Uh, we already ran them and I showed you, but basically here's how it works. And so we now, because we took out the bad variables that we are going to negatively impact our accuracy, we've dropped to a 14 and a 26. What were they before? I showed you already. Um, they were, let's go back here, 20 and 37. They're still both below 100, still going to be very accurate. And you'll see later on we don't need to do that optimal cutoff because we're going to have an extremely high accuracy of about 100%. You'll see it with this data set. Now it's different for every data set you use. But in this case, it's very accurate, and this is what we want to use. In the next video, I'm going to go on to test more, and we're going to graph the model and show you everything about it. That's the final video. So this is video four. If you haven't watched the previous three, go back and watch them. That's your exploratory data analysis, building the test and training data sets, which we need for this video here to build our model correctly on. And then the third video is where we use random forest and the Bruda method to go and predict the or get the importance of our predictor values so we can figure out which ones to use, which ones not to use, we have higher accuracy coming out of this model. And uh, we'll see it again in this uh, the fifth video to you'll see how really accurate we are with this. Thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe and like and go back and watch the other videos if you haven't. And also check out all the other great videos on my channel that I have for you and all kinds of great stuff from predict predictions to forecasting to you name it, all kinds of stuff on there. If there's something that's not on there that you want to see, shoot me a comment, uh, let me know, and uh, tell me what you, what you like, what you want to see, what's not on there that you'd like to see, and so on. Thanks again for watching. Take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day.